I'm Oliver and in this video I'm going to be highlighting each of our strings library to help finding you the right sound. In order to do that I've categorized our libraries in four main categories, so the full cinematic sound, chamber sound, so slightly smaller, beautiful and detailed, solo and small, which I call unique and raw, and inspiration, uh, which is left field and our evolutions. I'm going to be giving you a little bit of background information for each of the libraries, playing a couple of notes and play a few seconds of a demo or two. And this should give you a very good overview of what are the differences between the strings libraries and what could be right for your composing adventures. Let's start with one of our flagship libraries, the Spitfire Symphonic Strings. Recorded at the famous Air Studios in London, it provides a full and rich sound with plenty of natural reverb. It includes a big number of articulations. So if I go in here, for example, violins one, I can see effects, longs, consort blends, uh, sulpon, flautando, harmonics. It's literally a huge list and you have them for all of the five instruments here. So second violin, viola, celli, basses. We've included an ensemble, which is all of those instruments right under your fingertips. We also provide several signals and mic options and positions for you. So close, tree and ambient. The tree is the one that sits above the conductor. The ambients are a bit further away, so it gives you more of a 3D sound. And the C is a close mic, close to the instrument. You can get this library as part of our symphonic range, so meaning brass and woodwinds, and it's all recorded in the same space. What's very unique about this library is that these are the players that play on the big blockbuster films in that very same spot. So the Harry Potter films, Inception, Batman trilogy, Isle of Dogs, Paddington 2 and many more were recorded in the same spot and performed by the same players. And so this library gives you a very realistic blockbuster kind of sound. So let me play a couple of notes here. I've loaded Ensemble Long's Flautando, a Spitfire favorite articulation. very wonderful sound there. We've included a legato performance. It's programmed so you can play it and the transitions are recorded and carefully programmed by the fantastic Andy Blaney. So I'm just going to give you an example. So it's velocity sensitive. If you hit it softer, for example, you could hear it's a, it's a portamento, just a couple of celli. So pizzicato, for example. Consorts with the mute on. Slightly warmer sound, bass pits. Rich and full. Then I would like to play you a demo by Homai. Another one by Annie Blaney, mentioned him before, he programs our legato stuff and is a mind-blowing composer as well. Insane. Can you believe that these are virtual instruments? Right, next up, the BBC Symphony Orchestra. And I'd say this is Spitfire's proudest project. With an experience in the sampling business of over 10 years, we've recorded expertly the most accomplished players at Maida Vale Studios. So Maida Vale Studios is the home of the BBC Symphony Orchestra and it used to be host to the Beatles, Hendrix or Bowie. So a place with a lot of history and it just sounds absolutely amazing as well. It's slightly smaller, so it hasn't got that lush kind of reverb. Uh, so the sound is a little bit more uh, pointillistic and focused, I'd say. The string section as well of this library is part of a comprehensive orchestral standalone plugin here. So we've got our own plugin here 
hear, uh, including brass, woods and percussion. What else is special about this library is that these players, they play together every single day and it's one of the most respected orchestras in the world. It literally can't get uh, much better. And also an amazing feature here, if we dive into the signals here, is that we've recorded uh, spill mics, for example. So that means if, let's say, the violin plays and the brass, obviously the brass microphone is also going to pick up the violin because they're in the same room. And through that, you can actually really shape your own sound and bring character into your composition, which I believe is, is, is a very unique feature. The overall sounds of this library I describe as fresh, modern, precise, uh, with an outstanding control. So this is definitely for you if you would like to write professional and polished orchestral music. Right, let's have a quick look as well how it sounds. Uh, first violin longs, just loaded up here. And you can hear the sound dies off fairly quick. So it's, it's a smaller room, I said. It's not, it's not the lush kind of Air Studios reverb. I love the Soul Tasto sound on this one. Uh, Celli. Or maybe have some uh, other articulations, some shorts. You can see that these are very precise. I'm going to play you a couple of demos here as well. Of course, Annie Blaney. Christian's written a beautiful piece as well, in a slight different style. Next up, the Symphonic Strings Evolutions. So this is a, a first one I want to show you from our Evolutions series. Uh, this is a very unique kind of technology. There are basically pre-recorded phrases. So you press the key and within obviously that key, uh, the player is going to move around, for example, on the instrument or changing the tone slightly. And you can kind of extend your arrangements uh, with this. So this specific uh, evolutions is an extension of the symphonic strings. So it's the, that's why it's called symphonic strings evolutions. You can create beautiful evolving textures. Uh, it uses the EvoGrade technology and it helps bring you static arrangements to life. I'm just going to play you a little bit here. Again, here with more of a reverb because it's recorded uh, at Air Studios as well. So that's why it's, uh, it's a great extension to the symphonic strings. Next up, Hans Zimmer strings. So featuring a near impossible number of players, we have taken the master's approach to sampling and created the biggest project Spitfire has undertaken. So this is basically symphonic strings 
taken to the next level. And if you're seeking big thunderous string sounds, uh, then this is definitely for you. It's it's over 344 players, so it's an insane amount, and it creates this complete kind of new texture and string sound. We've also created a very unique glass-like kind of high strings for an extra texture. So I'm going to just give you an example here. Uh, 60 violins. I'm playing long super flautando. Let me just turn up the reverb a tiny, tiny bit here. Then 60 cellos. I'm going to play longs here, so a bit more of a sound with oomph. If we check out the legato quickly. Then really cool, the basses as well. Then I'd like to play you a couple of demos as well. by Christian. So there you can really hear that glass-like unique sound, but you can at the same time hear that there's a, a lot of players. So it's it's very a unique uh, collaboration, I'd say, there between Spitfire and Hans Zimmer. Next up, the Albion One strings. They're part of an all-in-one uh, toolkit, which offers you brass, woodwinds, uh, percussion loops, percussion hits, pads as well. So these strings are a little less detailed, nonetheless, uh, they're very powerful as well. For example, these low octave strings here. I really recommend this uh, if you want to start up and not just specifically want to go uh, for strings, but you enjoy having good epic strings. So then this one is definitely for you. As said, uh, Spitfire Symphonic Strings definitely have more articulations as well. They're more detailed. BBC Symphony Orchestra or even the Hans Zimmer Strings as well. Uh, very detailed kind of articulations. Let me just play you a couple of demos still. One by Andy Blaney again here. Then a demo I've made.
Let's go to the next section here. Chamber strings, uh, beautiful and detailed. And the Spitfire chamber strings are actually hands down my favorite Spitfire library ever. I'd say it's it's probably also Christian's and the Spitfire team's favorite this one long flautando at least for me i load this one up whenever i need to compose something with strings and no matter where i take the composition afterwards it's just absolutely mind-blowing I don't know what it is, it just feels absolutely amazing under the fingers. It's uh, 16 of the finest players uh, basically perform a big variety of articulations to achieve a detail and focused sound, I guess, while still capturing uh, the room uh, at Air Studios. Another advantage of this library is you can purchase the basic option uh, if you're on a bit of a budget and then you can later on purchase the professional option uh, which adds some extra mic positions. Let's hear another articulation here, the celli legato, flautando actually here. Legato violin. If we actually have a quick look here in the articulation list, then you can really see how super detailed this is. Look at that. You have legato, you have so many different legatos. Consort portamento, consort fast fingered, flat handle portamento, etc, etc. Loads of different longs. An absolute favorite of a string library here. Uh, let me just play you some demos here, one by Paul. Another one by Kim. Next up, the Spitfire Studio Strings. So the Spitfire Studio Strings are part of an all-new Spitfire orchestral range, so you have the brass and the woodwinds as well. We've recorded this at Air Studio One, a smaller, more controllable space. Uh, this library provides depth, detail and focus, so it's perfect for TV dramas, modern scanning noir, quirky indie or even crispy pop productions. This of course isn't to say that it can't do epic films or uh, game scores as well. And here too you have the chance to buy a more affordable basic edition with the option to expand to a professional edition. So I personally really, really like this library. Again, much drier, crisper sound. Just an example here. Here you can hear really, really well uh, the room or <laughs> that there is uh, not much of a room compared to Air Studios number one. And that's uh, Air Studios uh, Hall. Um, and that's for me really important if I want to write kind of for a pop production or I want to use the strings in a different context. You also have the option actually to use the VC sections or slightly smaller sections. So very, very versatile and detailed library as well. Let's hear the violas. Sword with the mutes here, very beautiful. I'm using Outrigger microphone here actually to give a little bit of space. Let me take that off and show you just a close one.
another demo by Paul Thompson for the studio strings. Another one. Next up, Orchestral Swarm. So this one is a collaboration between Bleeding Fingers and features in Blue Planet 2 and in the song Ocean Bloom, a collaboration between Hans Zimmer and Radiohead. It's an alternative of using straightforward long notes. Um, here the players are playing short notes at random intervals to create an undulating swell of sounds. So um, it's kind of, it's our swarm approach, but adapted for orchestra and it gives you an inspiring tool to create new unique textures. So here the strings also come uh, alongside the brass and woodwind sections. So I'm just going to play you here the swarm, string swarm, so you can hear what that means. Other swarms as well, for example, a Tenuto swarm. Not your conventional string library, but certainly very inspiring, or maybe also as an add-on to your uh, traditional string library. Here a demo as well by Homai Schmitz. Next up is the Oliver Arnold's Chamber Evolutions, and this is also one of my favorites. So hands down, the Spitfire Chamber Strings and Oliver Arnold's Chamber Evolutions, I'd get them in a heartbeat because they're just so incredibly useful and beautiful. So here we collaborate with BAFTA uh, winning composer Oliver Arnold. Uh, we've recorded an all-star ensemble performing very fragile yet warm evolving textures. So. That's very much uh, Oliver's sound, so if I just give you an example. So again, it's using our EvoGrid technology, and this library is called Oliver Arnold's Chamber Evolutions, but what it also includes are these chamber waves, and that for me is the real gem of the library. Just have a listen. I mean, this, this is just heaven on earth, this sound, and I absolutely love it. And here we've got a demo by Olafur himself.
So to sum up the chamber section, uh, Spitfire Chamber Strings, my absolute number one recommendation for you. Uh, Spitfire Studio Strings recorded at Air Studio One, so it's a smaller, more controllable space, very suitable for uh, slightly more crisp productions, maybe pop productions um, as well. Then the Orchestral Swarm could be an add-on, very inspiring, uses our Swarm approach, uh, but adapted for orchestra, so the strings come with the rest of the orchestral sections. Uh, then Oliver Arnold's Chamber Evolutions, another one of my favorites. Uh, the evolutions are very, very beautiful, very inspiring, and then the waves are just pure gold. I would say it's pure gold. It's really, really amazing. Right, let's go to the next section, uh, solo and small, uh, unique and raw. We have the Spitfire solo strings. So this is your library for intimacy and detail. So this single voice is designed to sit above the orchestra and stand out for solo passages. This also includes uh, one of our most or our most realistic performance patch to date. And it really blends well with your chamber library or symphonic ranges. So let me just get up here this total performance uh, violin patch. Paul does a very, very amazing performance. Check it out on YouTube. Um, I'm just going to give you a little bit here. Something like that, but it really lets you play uh, with the velocity and with the speed and the way you play it. And it's, it really feels amazing under the fingers. Uh, let me get out uh, viola, for example. Uh, there's a lot of uh, articulations as well, of course. So here, for example, the harmonics. You have your signal options as well, close, tree or ambient. Again, this is literally if you like um, a solo player stand out within a section sound. A demo here as well, Andy Blaney again, wonderful demo. for the lower section, cello. Next up, our uh, quartet library, the Sokoni Quartet. So this is an award-winning quartet recorded at the famous Wigmore Hall in London, providing you with the ultimate control to write for a traditional chamber quartet. You have all your usual articulations. You have a lot of mic options here and signal options. So close, close rim, stereo, tree, ambient and outrigger. I've loaded the ensemble here. Again, that's where you have uh, all four players on your fingertips, but of course you can load them up individually. Don't judge me uh, of my voice leading right here on the spot. Just a little bit um, of other sounds here. The cello, for example, spiccato. For example, pizzicato. And then a demo I've written a little while back just uh, to demonstrate the full quartet. Next up, the alternative solo strings. This was recorded in our own Spitfire Studios 
and we've recorded four of the most progressive and interesting soloists in London. We feature the violin, uh, the viola, the cello and the double bass. So you have access um, to kind of pointillistic articulations, kind of uh, unique and artisan longs there, which I'll play you in a second, and it has a very honest and dry sound. So it's ideal for your kind of left field projects, maybe in the style of, let's say, Nick Cave, Johnny Greenwood or John Bryan. Let me just play you a little bit here of these, let's say, uh, long alternatives, kind of artisan longs. So it can be uh, very inspiring. Of course, you can have the normal longs without those artisan embellishments. But to me, this is just a very, very honest sound. And here you have a valve microphone as well. So it gives you that kind of like kind of low end and rich, uh, beautiful sounds. Let me play you a demo here as well, a home ice piece. Next up, the London Contemporary Orchestra. I think there is definitely a shift in string writing and uh, this orchestra, the London Contemporary Orchestra, is at the forefront of it. And we've sampled innovative techniques and basically never before sampled articulations to achieve unique and experimental sound. So it goes into a slight different direction as the alternative solo strings. I'd also say it's the Radiohead's go-to orchestra and it's also recorded at our dry stage in London. So it gives you total control, uh, kind of performance and mixing wise, using your own kind of reverb, etc. One of my favorite sounds are these uh, spectral scrubs here. And you have other cool stuff such as this, these slacken sounds. short ones. Also very much like uh, Mika Levy, if you know uh, the composer. These ones are cool. We have these kind of uh, twitchy sounds here as well. Very cool stuff. Another demo by Homai for this one. Next up, the British Drama Toolkit. Uh, in collaboration with Samuel Sim, we have created this outstanding toolkit dedicated to an emotional and delicate sound. So the way you interact with the library is just completely new. So you basically play with both hands and you can see here the layers, texture, soft and loud. So depending on how hard you play, you achieve these kind of different layers and it's perfect to draft out your ideas, but then also it has its very unique character. It's also recorded at a dry stage. You can put it in any kind of space and apply any kind of reverb you like. So my left hand, for example, plays very soft accompaniment and the right hand tries to draft a bit of a melody. This library as well is, is mixed with other instruments. So you have some uh, woodwinds in there, clarinets, these kind of typical drama instruments.
it's just a wonderfully intuitive toolkit. Here a demo by Paul. Next up, the Oliver Arnold's Evolutions. So as opposed to before, these are a quartet, not the chamber evolutions, which we've recorded Air Studios as well. So big lush sound. This is more intimate for players. And the unique thing here is you can choose each individual players and have them play the evolutions. So you have a much more dry kind of single voice evolution. But I've loaded up here uh, all of the quartet together. And I want to just give you an example of the overall sound. very fragile and uh, beautiful sound so you can go a little bit more extreme with those as well just to demonstrate gets a little more left field and experimental there. Next one is inspiration, even more left field and some more of the evolutions. So angular string evolutions. So these are long evolving chamber strings recorded at the dry vintage craft acoustic of Aerodel Studios. So these ones are ultra minimal, realistic textures, shimmers, micro movements, and they provide kind of atmospheres from tense to beautiful. I'm just gonna play you a couple so you get an idea. The fragile string evolutions are recorded in the exact same spot. It's the same concept. However, uh, the players are playing more, let's say, experimental or fragile articulations, such as this one. So if you're looking for some avant-garde input, that's definitely for you. Then Evo Grids number three, that's a series of evolving motions and rhythmical elements bringing movements into your composition. So it works with our Evo Grid technology as well, but instead of evolving phrases, it's kind of moving uh, rhythms. So you get the idea there, but I want to play you a lovely demo by Homai. Then with the Kepler Orchestra, we've taken this idea to the next level, we've applied it to the whole orchestra. It also includes kind of Doppler effects, shard effects, 
And again, you have the brass and the woodwinds doing these things as well. And you have much more control in kind of what divisions uh, you want uh, these, these players to play. Also, this one is recorded in a much bigger stage as well. So the sound is uh, much wider and much richer. It's inspired by the great American uh, system composers such as uh, Steve Reich, uh, John Adams, uh, Philip Glass, and Terry Riley, uh, to, to name the four uh, big ones. And again here you can choose uh, different divisions, it's all, it's tempo locked as well. You can start playing off, off grids or, or on the beat, uh, so you get these kind of interesting rhythms. Let me play some shards as well here with the celli. Very cool. Some uh, Dopplers. Have them a little faster. Brilliant stuff. Then an awesome demo by Christian. Next up, Albion 5 Tundra. Here we're capturing the Scandinavian sound. So a 100-piece orchestra is playing at the edge of silence. And this library doesn't only offer strings and orchestral sounds, but also bellows, percussion, and warped kind of synths. So let me just play you an example here. Colenio Trato, a very gentle sound. Again, that's a complete new instrument and a complete different texture to everything else uh, we've heard so far. One of my favorites are these traveling trims. Let me play you some low strings as well. So this library is definitely for you if you're after that kind of Scandi sound. Let me play you Christian's demo here. Next up, Bernard Herrmann Composer Toolkit. So this library was created together with his estate, which granted us access to his original scores, which informed directly his legendary orchestration aesthetics, which we've captured players performing lively up front. And we also provide uh, patches featuring selected groups, unusual combination, chords, effects, and much more. Just to demonstrate here quickly. of things than his kind of typical chords. Super cool. And this is also recorded in a dry space. So you're not only getting uh, the Bernard Herrmann sound, but you also get a very dry upfront kind of orchestral sound. And in this one, you have really amazing synths as well, just as a kind of secret tip there. Let me play you some of the high strings as well, normal longs.
So again, it's uh, maybe a little less detailed than studio strings or uh, a symphonic range, chamber range. It's, it's more of a character library and you get much more of a, an all-round kind of content. So it's, it's all-round versus kind of depth. That's many times the decisions uh, you will have to make. Let me just play a demo here, Benny, which is one of the best demos I've hands down ever heard. Then me trying out the library. So, to conclude, I guess there is different scenarios. So, if I had to take one sample library to a deserted island with a computer, I said it already, it would be Spitfire chamber strings, and I'd definitely try to smuggle somewhere Oliver Arnold's chamber strings too, because that kind of realism and warmth there really adds and complements the Spitfire chamber strings. Uh, if I had the budget to choose uh, maybe several libraries to be equipped for most string scenarios that I have kind of encountered in, in the work I do, uh, I'd get Spitfire symphonic strings, so you're covered for the, for the Hollywood stuff, for the big stuff. Chamber strings, because as I said, they're just absolutely fantastic. Oliver Arnold's Chamber Evolutions, because you have a bit of inspiration there and these evolutions, you can literally use them everywhere to just add a little bit kind of of fairy dust on top. Uh, Spitfire solo strings, very useful. There's always somewhere kind of a solo line that is needed or solo violin, etc. And uh, you can use them in any kind of settings just by themselves or on top of an orchestra. The LCO strings, so I want to be equipped for my uh, left field kind of stuff. Then if I had to choose a library which includes strings but offers other orchestral content, definitely Albion 1, especially on a slightly lower budget. Uh, you can literally score anything. It's got pads, it's got percussion, it's got big percussion, it's got loops, it's got your string orchestra, it's got uh, the woods and the brass. So you're really well equipped with that one. The BBC Symphony Orchestra, I mean, definitely get it if you have a little bit more uh, budget. And with that one, you can really focus on professional orchestral scoring. Albion 5, I would also recommend if you're, again, say, let's say on a low, mid budget to kind of score in a more contemporary Scandi style, which is at the moment very much on the rise or is very popular, uh, at least in Europe. So these would be... Uh, my choices. So if you want us to do more videos like this, uh, please let us know. If you have any questions, please let us know as well. We're always happy to help. I hope this wasn't too long and I hope I could help you with the choice of your string section. Take care and see you in the next one. Bye bye.